is something I've been wanting to do for a long time, which is just me looking at my IMDb ratings, my, okay. my most recent ratings, and just talking about what I've rated and what I've watched. Oh, okay. Like, you've done this before, yeah. Um, you watch a lot of things. So usually about 90% of the things, I'm like, I haven't heard of this. <laughs> yeah. Well, some of the stuff you have. Yeah. But so let's just go through it. This is, uh, I, so I watched the movie Air, which is about... Oh, the Jordan one. Yeah. I want to watch it. Good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a it's a procedural, you know what, where, right. what, and there's... What's your uh, score? Oh, I gave it a seven. Okay, good. Yeah. It, it's directed by Ben Affleck. Right. Ben and Affleck's in it. Matt Damon. Matt Damon's in it, yeah. Jason Bateman. And it's, it, it's good. And there's like they, there's no Jordan, right? They they don't really show yeah an actor playing him. Yeah, well they they purposely only show the back of his head, right. which I think is good because it really adds to the mystique of because they really yeah. are uh, having you know, the 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 premise of the story is that it's just before it's just as Michael Jordan is being drafted in the NBA, right? And he is talking with a bunch of companies about sponsorships, and the at the time Nike was not known for their basketball shoes they right, were it was just running right it was running shoes jogging yeah. shoes it, they, so they were kind of a joke uh trying to like, who enter was the big basketball shoe at the it was adidas and converse converse right yeah adidas and converse right and and converse was kind of the old school and right. adidas was for the cool kids so reebok wasn't yet a thing oh no no Re okay. reebok was secondary to nike yeah so air the movie um the way it's marketed it's more silly in the trailers than the movie is the other movie that i uh, re-watched late at night was inception <sighs> Oh, I think I've seen it twice. I wonder if I've seen it three times. So, I would like to see that again. Yeah, so I think it was my second watch. I've watched a lot of analyses on YouTube, but I don't yeah. think I've ever just sat down and rewatched it. It's 2010, so it's a long time ago. Stop it, dude. Yeah. 13 years? Yeah. And Holy crap. The the thing that I the reason why I wanted to right. rewatch it is I was watching another analysis video on YouTube and it just sort of piqued my interest. I'm like, oh, you know what? I think I want to go back and watch that scene. So I got on a streaming service or wherever <laughs> right. it was and started watching that scene. I was like, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to go back to the <laughs> And what it did for me was it reminded me how good Christopher Nolan was back then. Yeah. Because he's, his, in my book, his movies have definitely declined. I mean, uh, well, like Tenant. I like Tenet. Ugh, it's no Inception. It's no Inception, but I liked it. Eh, I a wasn't. lot of people hated it, though. You're right that it's not... I think the smarter people liked it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it, it. It wasn't... I'm, I'm not a... I mean, I, I can... The more I watch analyses of it, the more yeah. I appreciate it. But you know, when I was watching it, I'm like... Huh. I, I was just kind of bored, really. Because like my brother and I watched that at my place, so I didn't even see it in the theater. Which, by the way, might have helped. Because I heard a lot of people in the theater couldn't hear the dialogue very well. I couldn't hear the dialogue at home. I heard, we heard it fine for whatever reason. So I never understood that one. And we liked it. But well, most it was, people watched it at home though, because it was during the pandemic. pandemic it was pre, pre-vaccine yeah, yeah. That, that summer. It was when it was in the theater. Um, but anyway, so I rewatched Inception and uh, re- I, I gave it a 10 originally 13 years ago and I gave it a 10 again. Yeah. It, it, oh, it's so good. Well, because... Because of his more recent movies, I thought, did I just drink the Kool Aid back then? But I didn't. Rewatching Inception. Well, well what's like? I what's the other movie that wasn't so good or something? Well, Interstellar. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Interstellar. I mean, it's not. I, a, I liked it. Yeah, it's but, not Inception, but Inception is one of the best movies ever. Yeah. <laughs> so, so looking at his movies that that I've rated. Um, Tenet, I gave a five. Inception, what? I gave a ten. The Prestige, I gave a seven. Although I might kind of bump that up Prestige to an eight. Prestige is pretty fun. Um, Interstellar, I gave an eight. And uh, let's but see. like the Prestige is old, right? Like it's before Inception. It's one of the first movies yeah. he made. Yeah. Um, so, Dark uh, you know, I was I was never a huge fan of. I, I you know I, I probably gave that Memento. A, so Memento, I, undoubtedly, I gave a ten. Yeah. A Dark Knight, I gave a seven. You know, it's, it's a good movie. Um, Insomnia, I gave Wait, what a six. Was Insomnia? Uh, it was a remake of a of a Swedish movie, I think. But did that have? And it has Al Pacino, Al Pacino. and Robin Williams. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. But yeah. So the first movie, the first major movie that he released was Memento, and that is a 
pure masterpiece. I've seen that a few times, but I want to rewatch it. Batman Begins, I'm sure I gave probably a seven. Yeah. Prestige, I gave a seven. I could probably... Dark Knight, I gave a seven. Inception, 10. Dark Knight Rises, I didn't really Prestige like that. Prestige has a really cool concept and a, a neat twist, but overall, it does have gaps as a movie. Like, okay. But so you're not... I think seven is fine. Okay. I, I, I argue you're seven on Dark Knight, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I I know it's a darling for it's a lot a of people. It's not a 10 for me, though, but it's still... I would probably give it a nine. Yeah, a lot of people think it's one yeah. of the best movies of all time. Um, I, it's still not better than Inception. Though. There there were certain things about the movie that I was just kind of like... But the seven to me is like... That was yeah, a good no, movie. Yeah, that's a good movie, yeah. yeah. Interstellar, uh, I gave an eight. Yeah, I really liked Inception, but uh, or Interstellar, but uh, not as much as Inception and yeah, Memento. Yeah, no, Inception is definitely... Is- um, Dunkirk, I probably gave an eight... Uh, yeah, I gave Dunk. I really like Dunkirk. Yeah, that was really good too. And, and Tenet. So you know, you but have that's this. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't. So well, so you have Memento, yeah. which is a ten, and then you know, Batman movies. How good can that really be? Prestige. We're, we're agreeing. It's, it's not. And then you have Inception. And in, when he made Inception, it was right after Dark Knight, and he was just you know Hollywood darling, right? Yeah. It was like what else? And that's when he really became this. Um, bigger than life figure among a certain internet crowd I, I, and i, I would you. call myself to be adjacent to that crowd and then interstellar came out and i had really high hopes and you know it was it was met for the most part but it you know the movie isn't trying to be super complicated it's certainly dunkirk isn't trying to be complicated but i found it to be a stylistic excellent movie um, but yeah. then Tenet, so, you know, to me, I, I find a rise and then a fall. And I feel like with Tenet, he had just gone so, him and his brother as a co-writer in a lot of these movies, I feel like he, he's trying really hard to to push the audience. You know, Inception pushes the audience, right? Yeah. And Interstellar pushes the audience. Sure. And I feel like with Tenet, he's like purposely trying to recreate those Probably those things, yeah. and, and instead of centering it around a good story, Memento pushes the audience, but it's centered around such a good story, yeah, and an understandable one, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, yes, I, I, I mostly don't disagree. I, I still think though, like, because the the curve is actually it starts at ten, then drops a bit, then goes back to ten, then drops a bit. Yeah. So he's got another ten in him. Yeah. So well, I, I would hope, yeah. I, 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 and I certainly could see that. I mean, Tenet, you could argue is too smart you know he he's he's so smart and such a good filmmaker that he went too far for many audience members well yes although i will agree with you even though i liked it and i really did i still don't think the story is that interesting yeah that's what i'm saying right yeah it's just it was visually and and the way he told it was so compelling to me yeah but I agree. Like the whereas the Inception storyline is super compelling. Yeah. The Memento storyline is super interesting. Yeah, and the, Mem- and the thing about Memento and Inception is even if you're only catching half of the context, yeah, you you generally get what's happening. The yeah. the story beats the the tension makes sense. With Tenet, there were moments, particularly towards the end, I'm like. Huh? <laughs> so what? And uh, you know that's not a good place you want your audience to be. I hear you. I also do like movies like Primer, which are like that, and, which I didn't like. Right, and I love Primer. Primer is one of my favorite movies, and yeah. it's a bizarre, very hard to follow movie. I've I've had to watch multiple <laughs> YouTube analyses of Primer and Tenet, yeah, to comprehend right. halfway what's happening and enjoy the movie much more yeah. primer but, included having seen those analyses videos but you shouldn't have to no, and i agree like look i wouldn't i would never represent especially primer i would never represent to someone like oh i guarantee you love this movie right like <laughs> well the first uh three-fifths of primer is one of the best movies ever made and and understandable very understandable but the last bit i start going and they don't give you enough information to even make guesses as to what's happening. They purposely, yeah, yeah, I, they yeah. purposely leave things out. They do. They definitely do. I mean, that was definitely part of it was yeah. to disorient you with the consequences of even the most basic kind of time machine. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, another movie I saw is Free Guy. I finally saw Free Guy with. Oh yeah. With that's uh, fun. Ryan Reynolds. That's yeah. A fun movie. I gave it a seven. Yeah. What would you give it? Probably seven. Yeah, I mean, I had a lot of fun. It was not like mind blowing, but it was really. Uh, it, that's a that's a movie that there's no like if you're if you're feeling like you just want to have a good fun movie, that's yeah. it. And it's funny. Yeah. And understandable. Yeah. 
it, yeah, I kind of equate this style of movie fr- like an 80s movie, you know, like with Back to the Future. Yeah. It's not super complicated. It's fun. It's quick. And, you know, and I laughed a lot during it, too. There yeah. was a lot of yeah, funny things. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds, he can be kind of like Jack Black, a little one note with his humor, sure. but but I'm in for it. I'm in, too. Yeah. Yeah. Chimp Empire is a documentary. Came Chimp out. Empire? Chimp Empire. Is that a doc? Oh, okay. And it's on Netflix. And... It's really interesting. Is that about that band of chimps that they followed that was like hyper violent? Um, not hyper violent, oh, okay. but they show chimps in all of their variability. Okay. And the the difference with this documentary is it's just footage, and you're just like, how did you get this footage? Because right. they're right there with mm. the chimps, and the chimps look like it, you know. Of course, they can see the cameras, but they must be so acclimated that they wow. don't react to it or something and they piece together this story because you know every chimp uh, tribe has a territory and there are neighboring chimps and chimp tribes and so there are battles and they name all the chimps and they follow certain chimps in their lifetime you know and they they tell the story is one of them named caesar (laughs) (laughs) and the it, it it illuminates the the full chimp society and culture and and behavior which was way more complicated than i had known originally and you're just like my god we are just a shade away from chimps i mean you see so much in the chimps <laughs> yeah. behavior and emotions and life like that's us that are are so human yeah. you know which of course makes sense um for some reason i rated reno 911 the tv show um, I, sometimes I'll notice I never rate it, particularly TV okay. shows. Because so you went back and retro rated. And I gave it a 10 because it's... I've never seen it. I've never watched Reno. What? Yeah. What? I've Why? never seen Parks and Rec either. Well, that's understandable because okay. that's kind of particular. But Reno 911 is so sketch-based. You could just go on YouTube. It and, is? Okay. Yeah. It's, there's no storyline. Oh, okay. There's literally no storyline. I, I don't know it because I never saw it. <laughs> it's like Cops where... Oh, there's so a. Oh, I it's, see. There, it's a right. It's a play on cops. Yeah, it's and a mockumentary so like is, cops where the, you know, this oh. this one police station, uh, and they'll acknowledge the camera, the camera right. people, you know, and I they'll see. they'll be in the station or they'll go on calls, and their format is on the calls when you know they arrive on scene, they will, uh, the show will hire unknown improv comedians. Oh, and they give them like a character. And like a uh, uh, David Cross, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, and also um, uh, uh, oh. Key and Peel, the the key guy. You know, I remember actually. Now that I think about it, I remember seeing like an interview with someone about this. But isn't it funny? I know almost zero about this. It it like skipped me. I just it's one of the funniest yeah. things. I mean, certainly there are some dud bits. So I got to go back. It, yeah, but the the characters that are realized the. Uh, the the banter wow uh, and eventually you kind of get to know some of these people who are some of the main actors in it so it's um there was this tv show called a state do you remember this yeah i remember the state with michael showalter yeah, yeah. So and some of them and also um thomas tom lennon okay and uh carrie kenny and uh, a lot of those folks uh branched off into a lot of things in and a lot of them ended up making this show oh my god Ma- mainly um tom lennon anyway um for some reason i also rated prison break the tv show do you remember that tv show prison break oh yeah there was a dude trying to break from prison right? and he had a I tattoo never saw it but I he, know what he, you're about. Yeah, yeah for some reason in 2005 it was a big splash back yeah then. it was it was yeah. like um it Everyone wasn't like was there watching. A second season where he was out of prison. Yeah, so it <laughs> it really lost its. Um, it's, like it's prison break. <laughs> yeah, he, he got out, and they really right. it really just <laughs> lost its premise. You know, sort of like yeah. with. Um, uh, I would argue with uh, uh, what's the zombie one, La- uh, the Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Uh, eventually, it's like. You just run out of room to, to, to write. That that happened even in the graphic novel. I never finished watch. I know I actually watch most of the show, but even in the graphic novel, which I loved, at some point, zombies were not even an issue. Like, yeah. It was all humans, human yeah. fighting humans. Yeah. And then even that issue gets, gets yeah. played out. You know, yeah. you're just like, okay. So 
with Prison Break, though, the first season, it was such a phenomenon, and it was well made for 2005. You know, this is this is before all the prestige TV right. we had. But I gave it a five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Berta, before moving on, let's take a little break. What do you say? Let's do it. Okay, we're back from the break. Uh, Breaking Bad, for some reason, I rated that recently. I, I, I guess I never rated it, so I, I gave it a seven. Seven? I know that people gave, gave it, give it a ten. And, you know, maybe I never... Uh, uh, I've said this before, but oh. <laughs> I started watching it when it first came out, just yeah. like everyone else did, and it wasn't the phenomenon yet. I remember liking it and the premise, but not really being super hooked. Then, for whatever reason, I put it down and never went back. Then, years preceding, people yeah. are just like, oh my God, it's the best, thing best ever. ever, you got to watch it. And, I was, and I'd be like, oh, okay, you know, I got to watch it. And I just, I just never got around to it. Then eventually I did, uh-huh. and I was like, okay. I'm, I mean, my my younger brother is just like, this show is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Kind of, kind of talk. you know what I mean? People talk like people that. People do talk like that. I disagree with them. So I was like, okay, I've got to power through. And if I don't like it at first, I've just got to stick it out. You know, yeah. sometimes it takes a while for something to grow. So I really did. You know, I, was, I started like halfway through the first season and powered my way through second season. And, you know, and I was like, okay, you know, I, I, there, there are some good scenes. And, and I, again, seven still good. Yeah. And, and, and I'm like, yeah, it, it's pretty good. Halfway through the second season, for whatever reason, I put it down and in, fully intending on watching all the way through. Right. And I just never got around to getting back to it, which always tells me something wait so you've never finished it no oh well no duh okay now that explains it but would you say second season first half uh, should compel someone to continue watching well i was certainly compelled but i'm just saying it's like hard to imagine you would have given that show a 10 or even a nine or nine let alone a 10 if you only got through the first two seasons yeah i i i wouldn't give it a 10 but only because I reserved that for something like The Sopranos and The Wire. But I would definitely give it a nine. <laughs> that show was but amazing. T- to me, <laughs> I-, I could detect that I wasn't going to enjoy where it was headed. The The way people would talk about what was so yeah. good about it, you know, the descent of yeah. uh, what's-his-face into uh, psychopathy and <laughs> being the bad guy, I wasn't that interested in that i could see where it was kind of headed i think Uh, the journey ends up being so good for most people that watch it that's why they bump it up so high but you you didn't get through the journey and i didn't want to because i'm like (laughs) if i have to it's like eating vegetables like okay i've got to you know i'm just like hey you know everyone else loves this and that's fine i'm sure there's a lot of value to it but i I just it is like there's so much vegetables with spicy hot sauce (laughs) well it's like I'm sure if I powered through it, it would have improved, yeah. I'm guessing. But I just was like, you know what? I just, I don't want to. <laughs> and that doesn't make me a bad person. It doesn't make you a bad person. Uh, the next thing I rated is Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Have we talked about this oh, on the show yet? I have not watched it because I was told not to. So here, I'll tell you my journey with the show. I heard a bunch of bad press about it, but yeah. I was like, hmm. The the people saying the bad things, I don't usually respect their opinion. You know, there's a lot of misogyny going on. So I was just like, you know, I'm going to watch it and I'm going to have an open mind. So I started watching it and and I liked it in the beginning. Um, I even cried in, somewhere in the beginning, uh, especially when Elrond and um, the, the dwarf, I, I can't remember who his friend is, but there was some, you know, because they flesh out the Lord of the Rings world, right. Tolkien's world. And give us some background and some looks at some things that I have often thought about, you know, having read and know the full story of the history of of Middle Earth that I've been a part of for 40 years. And D&D is based on that. So, it's you know, there's a lot wrapped up in it for me. Sure. And so when I'm watching it, there were some really satisfying moments. I was just like, oh, it's just so great to see. And then, and then watching how, uh, you know, the dwarf, his wife, because... We we in the books they never uh, talk. They they refer to female dwarves, but they never never depict them. Yeah, (laughs) they're they're referred to, but they're never seen. So um, you just really had no idea what they were like because Tolkien never depicted them. But uh, the show actually wrote one in, and they had a black actress actually portray her. And I thought she was a perfect. uh, Yeah, I didn't know what I was going to see, but she completely slotted in and i'm getting chills just thinking about it to what i would imagine a dwarf wife to be like okay. you know what i mean she was strong and um tolerant but you know 
kind of but also the dwarf husband guy was strong as well but he kind of struggled because of his dad and and there's a lot of daddy issues in the dwarven culture right. <laughs> you know um you could argue the entire hobbit storyline is based on daddy issues in the dwarven culture anyway so um there were some real moments in the beginning so you know i was buying into it and then they have these kind of hobbit like creatures and i was kind of like oh it's kind of cute and then da 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 and then we're seeing also um galadriel and her backstory and i was like okay you know there's some there's some real goofy shit but you know it's a tv show what are you gonna do well what was the goofy shit like well so one of the first scenes we see with galadriel is that um yeah, I won't go into the details on the lore, but essentially she is convinced that Sauron is still out and about right. and she's trying to find him while he's weak and get rid of him. And this is pre uh, Lord of the Rings. Though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, it's just before the ring is cut off of Sauron's finger. Got so it. it's leading up to that. And so Gladriel's traveling all over the world and she's, she has this band of elves that are following her and the, the discussions that they were having were just really stupid and Tolkien would have never written dialogue like this and never would have <laughs> had, it was like it, 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 the way it read to me was that whoever wrote it had basically just watched the movies. Oh seemingly, no. And had, cause you know, and had like a modern sensibility for the rest of it. Yes. Yeah. They, they just watched the movies, had a oh. very limited understanding of the world. And then, basically wrote kind of like fan bad fan fiction i wonder if it's a mix because it's kind of hard to tell a lot of these times but i wonder if it's a mix like they hired quote-unquote good writers to write stuff and they also hired consultants about the lore and you know when it's not the same person there's a loss in translation thing and then the the lore person might go well this is the way it is and the script writer yeah but that doesn't scan so i'm yeah, gonna write it but this way you could argue that peter jackson and his two co-writers I can't remember their names, t two women, I believe, uh, were those people. They they weren't super mm -hmm. massive experts on the Tolkien lore, but... They still respected it. But they're it. good... Well, not only respected it, but they're good writers. Mm. <laughs> they know how to make a good story. Oh, okay, so you're actually like... Yeah, so you just... The writing was bad. <laughs> yeah, so so the goofy yeah. scene that I, that I first started to go, mm, where's this headed? Uh, they run into an ice troll up in the north, and okay. the ice troll is just is just dominating these elves, you know, which is fine. And then Galadriel just comes out of nowhere and does one of those really dumb sort of anime or um, oh, I... Steven Seagal style, uh, yeah. Legolas style, yeah. jumping over slash the ice. Aren't and then you the, worried and, about the ice troll? And then the ice troll goes, uh, <laughs> and then falls over. Which we've seen a billion times. Yeah. And it's, it's not, so cliched. It's not, and it's not in character. Right. That's not how they are. Right. That's why when in the Hobbit movies, yeah, which I only watched the first one, I couldn't stand it. Oh, when Leg they turned Legolas that might be into the best a one. ninja assassin. Yeah, I was like, what? Yeah, but if if that's all they had done yeah. and they had done it well, because you know Peter Jackson's uh, uh, movies very much misrepresent the elves in that way. Uh, you know, arguably just with Legolas, not not Elrond. But the but the well no, but the first Lord of the Rings series, the first three, yeah, Legolas is a badass, but he's not an over the top badass. No, but if you read the books, and I hate to say that phrase, but <laughs> as much as I have, um, Legolas sings a very sure. happy happy songs sure. repeatedly. Yes, and he's also. A very socially adept, perhaps the most socially Instead adept. Instead of a Spock character. Yeah. In the movies, yeah, Legolas comes true. off like he's this deadpan logical assassin. Yeah. And, uh, and it's fine. You know, I, I'll let that one go because, it, you know, it works for but a certain... But remember, they do have the, the... Him and Gimli still have the relationship yeah. that's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, but anyways, you're right. But so Lord of the Rings... It takes the worst part of the Peter uh -huh. Jackson universe uh -huh. and accentuates those things and yeah. then writes an incomprehensible, I mind you, incomprehensible storyline uh, that makes no sense uh, and lacks all. And so, 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 so anyway, in the beginning, I'm like, I'm into it. I'm crying. I'm like, right. oh, okay. You know, the, 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 and you want, you're hungry for more lore. The, the jerk something. faces are just jerk faces. I, I'm, I'm about halfway through the season and I'm like, so wait is this a bad show like it was like you with phantom menace uh, you go yeah. into it wanting to yeah. like it and then at a yeah. certain point you're a like later you're like 
wait <laughs> it, 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 it really shows yeah. how bad it must be because you really want to fully intending it yeah you, you really want to give and it walking out of the theater going that was so awesome right so i was doing that after the first yeah. couple episodes you know even forgiving those those yeah. kind of dumb scenes i'm like well it, it, it'll be fine it'll work glad you're you know and I also knew that Gladriel was a warrior badass. You know, some people were like, that's not Gladriel. I'm like, well, it actually is. I mean, it, it, Tolkien doesn't go into full detail, but that is conceivable that, that Gladriel was a sword-wheeling warrior yeah. who uh, dominated in a lot of ways. And so, you know, it's possible. But about halfway through the season, and then the dwarf Elrond story was still pretty strong, but there were all these other stories. Oh, boy that were and i won't go into detail there's been a lot of analysis on it but it, it it just started getting so bad and then about by episode seven i was laughing at what was happening oh, on the no. screen i was like are you kidding me oh. <laughs> and then by the end of the season when the writers are s trying so hard it's like watching fifth graders who are standing before you going look at this story i wrote daddy yeah. And in their heart, they want you to be as moved as you are by the Peter Jackson trilogy. Right. There are just direct story beats that they're oh, copying, seemingly. Yeah. And you're just like, right. my God, you fucked that one up. Like, you don't even understand what the beat yeah. meant. Like, right. that's what it looked like. It looked like they didn't oh. even understand <clears throat> what Peter yeah. Jackson and Tolkien were actually even trying to get across <clears throat> you know sort of like a third grader watching um return of the king and um you're like oh my god you know aragorn and return of the king and the sacrifice and <clears throat> you know frodo at the end he actually puts on the ring but right. then Gollum, just like gandalf said plays a role and you know it's complicated it's, you know it's a lot of uh, yeah i got it Got it. I so, know exactly what we got. So, 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 so what a third grader might walk out of the movie, and I don't want to put down third graders, but you know, you can imagine, <clears throat> they'd be like, "Man, Legolas was so badass right. when he did that thing off off of the yeah. off of the the Oliphant. Like that was so cool. You got to multiply that by a hundred. Yeah. So it was like the writers. That's what they were dealing yeah. with, and this whole thing, you know, like with um, episode nine and eight of Star Wars. Yeah when uh the beginning of episode eight when luke throws the lightsaber the very opening scene right yeah we end episode seven with ray handing and you just imagine like oh boy oh shit yeah. <clears throat> luke's gonna kick some ass now yeah and uh you know the writer ryan johnson decides to subvert that and that principle is okay as long as you keep it grounded within right. what we all understand the character to be. <laughs> so actually, because, well, you're, because the thing you're talking about is like folks trying, trying to respect the original material and just failing really badly at it because they learned the wrong lessons. You're about to enter into territory that's even more egregious, which is I burned the original material. Yeah. And I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and um, I think it's motivated by two things. One, they've they've come up watching shows that were very popular, like Lost, and right. Lost did this all the time. And Lost is a terribly written show. I know some people might disagree. No, no, no. I, I mean, I thought it was very well written for the first season, kind of part of the second, until I learned what happened after that. <laughs> it's a, it's one of the best made TV shows. Yeah. With one of the dumbest oversight. Well, because because. I'm sure you'll agree. When you first start watching the first season, you're thinking, oh my God, this is some brilliant writing mm -hmm. because the assumption well, is that it's all going to pay out. Well, th but that's, right? a, that's a parallel to the character interactions, which did make sense because right. you know, the, right. the characters didn't know what was happening right. and their storyline. And they were good. They were inter interesting, yeah. the storylines. Yeah. And you just were putting the trust in the writers that yeah. like, I know this seems weird. I know these things don't seem like they make any sense. Yeah. We got this. Yeah, and it very quickly was obvious. Like, the oh, writers had you were just making shit up. I mean, it, <laughs> it, it, so the principle that they were following, which again, J.J. Abrams, right? What didn't he write that? Yeah, yeah. Which is that? Okay, remember last season that e the thing that everyone talked about was that amazing twist. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. Let's do that again. Yeah. 
every episode. Every episode. Let's have a twist. But actually, at let's the same time, blow like, people's minds. And, and at the same time, by like, oh, but how do you resolve the one from the? It's like, don't don't worry about that. Actually, we've moved on from there. Yeah. Wait, no, you're learning the wrong lessons here. Because yeah. I wanted you to resolve that crazy twist you're talking about. Instead, well, and you're just giving me new crazy twists. You lose your audience because <laughs> they see through it. They're like, right. oh. These are just, twi- you know, I, I've None heard... this is going to matter. These I, are just twists for twists sake. I've heard similar things about uh, Walking Dead. Like uh, like the later seasons, there was a similar uh, uh, shock value that seemed to be entering into the... Pri- the top priority was the shock value instead of making a good story that did have shocking moments, right. you know, that made sense. And so with... Uh, Star Wars, the you know the main movie, second trilogy, the third trilogy, and then with Lost, and so with Rings of Power, Lord of the Rings, I think they uh, learned in this really obtuse way the wrong lessons of yeah. popular TV shows in the past, and maybe even possibly the original trilogy. So they go into the movie uh, or the TV show just trying to do that. Yeah, with that in mind. And there, it's it, it's it, long story short, it's not good, and. Everyone agrees. <laughs> now, some people dislike the movie for the wrong reasons. They're like, they don't want to see women, basically, and, and they don't want to see people of color, basically, in in these depictions. Okay, so pause on that one, because certainly there are plenty of uh, unfortunate trolls online that literally are doing what you just did. At the same time, what I've also noticed, it, because I'll get annoyed about this too, is shows or movies that in the effort of, of doing diversity, they just kind of like add the, the diversity in. Yeah. But with crap character arcs and totally unbelievable bullshit. Right. There's a way to work them in. Like with House of the Dragon, uh, you know, there were those accusations, but it's canon. <laughs> right. No, I, 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 and, I, and two, yeah. uh, the it makes total sense. And I had zero problem with that. Right. Because none of it felt like... So th- that's what I'm saying. You yeah. know, we've talked about it somewhere. There's yeah. a way to do it. You know, right. it, it's fine. It's a good effort. It's like, hey, you know, let's try to get a, a div- more diverse character. So what I'm asking you is, did you, which type did you feel was in The Lord of the Rings? Um, I don't have the entire thing okay. in my head, but it, it, it was more of the House of the Dragon... Um, Okay. side of things like, like for example you mentioned uh, a black dwarf mm-hmm. and you were saying that that's fine yeah but i can see how many people were probably like what is going on but it's not mentioned right <laughs> in the in, and in fact with house of the dragons with house of the dragon it, it actually is mentioned the color of the, the skin of that house and it, yeah. it doesn't say that they're black um but you're like, well, it's so well written, and it does it, it. It it's it's. You could imagine that it's maybe shoehorned in a little bit, yeah. but um, but it's so well depicted and so well written, and and the black characters, you know, the the characters played by black actors are normal, three dimensional, good with good people with flaws. Could, you know, mm. that's the key. Right. <laughs> you don't just shove a, a non white male character and then proceed to make them good at everything and never have a flaw i mean that's what ray was that is what that is one of the complaints that people that people that are not these trolls i'm talking about including myself have sometimes about these things right i actually i gotta be honest i didn't mind ray in the first in the no, first no no awakens i loved yeah, ray in the it first was like in that second movie where it's like oh so you're basically already better than luke skywalker yeah and, <laughs> and they're you know looking back you can see some of that in the writing where Ray instantly is a master pilot of the Millennium Falcon. But it didn't bother me as But it much. didn't bother me, and it still doesn't really. Yeah. Um, but when you look at the story arc of Ray, particularly past the first movie, you're like, so what's the story arc? You know, when you look at the story arc of Luke Skywalker or, yeah. or Anakin Skywalker, uh, and the, anyway, so the same thing happened with Obi-Wan Kenobi, the, the, I- the TV show. They wanted to subvert it, and so they started him off in the the TV show. At, did you watch the TV show? No, I didn't. They started him off as weak, scared, and avoidant. Which is not and in, at all incompetent. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and um, That's dumb. and just like ineffectual, like like he was this scared <sighs> little boy. It is that a makes syndrome, no dude. sense. You see the before. Yeah, I know when the last time we see him. Yeah. in uh, episode three, he is. 
you know, peak of his, grounded, literally. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I am the future of the yeah. Jedi. I'm going to watch Luke from afar on Tatooine. The next time we see him in episode four, completely he, grounded. <laughs> yeah. He, he's a master. He, he goes right up to Darth yeah. Vader. He, he goes right for the shield generator. He's above it all. He sees Luke and he, you know, he's, Dude. he's light, but he leads and, you know, and, so yeah if you wanted to show us his character arc it needed to happen before even episode one or show <laughs> us why he became weak and ineffectual right he literally starts the tv show with no force powers he has no I'm so glad i didn't see this. he has no force powers it's just you're right it is this trope though this trend of like the key is to subvert expectations at yeah. all costs yeah the, the regardless is, of story right the other thing that i think happens sometimes when they are like let's say um we talked about this before you will create a, a female heroine and you're like well we don't want to offend females so we need to make sure she has no flaws and she's perfect right it's like well th that's offensive yeah because that's not reality it's pandering and yeah. and, and many women don't like that right so um you know with with luke skywalker it was a little better because they actually give the backstory as to brian johnson tells us why luke became who is at you know, least he does that yes and, and it did make sense to me you know for some people it doesn't but you know uh he, he's he's head of the the new jedi order and he takes right. in ben and he because he's jedi he sees this future yeah. in in ben and he struggles in the same way that he struggled right. with with darth vader he's in the darkness he doesn't have anyone helping him and he's like i need mm -hmm. to save the universe i need to kill him and and then at the last moment he's like oh i can't kill him that's evil and so he's about to give up but then right. and then uh uh uh, uh rilo um rilo kylo kylo yeah. <laughs> kylo wakes up sees the lightsaber above his head interprets that as he's about to be killed even though luke was about to relent and is betrayed obviously right. and that turns him and so the the effort the irony to is there right right so and, and that's a good story and then I, and then you can imagine luke after that being traumatized being, blah, blah, being yeah. really demoralized by what he had done and then yeah. d and saying i'm gonna put myself on a, I, i'm done with this rebel bullshit like just leave me alone like yeah. you know it, it makes some sense well and and i gotta say when i watched the second one i actually enjoyed a lot of it I, the, the casino planet really bugged me that yeah. whole sequence Ugh. but i enjoyed a lot of it i yeah. didn't really i know a lot of people analyze like well if you can travel faster than light and do that thing with the spaceship that breaks the whole universe yeah fair enough I, I and then they're running out of gas thing <laughs> right oh that that one that one definitely bothered me yeah but yeah. a lot of the other stuff didn't bother me and yeah, i yeah. liked a lot of it yeah yeah me too i had a similar situation with that one as i did with the matrix series where when i watched matrix 2 i i kind of liked it i, yeah, I yeah. did but by the time I watched Matrix 3, it retroactively made Matrix 2 Absolutely. Yeah. stupid. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to rattle through yeah. the, the beef. I gave a 10. Uh, we talked oh, a lot yes. about it. How many would you get? Yeah, I think I gave it a 10. Didn't okay. we discuss it? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I gave it a 10. Uh, Ted Lasso TV show, I gave it a 7. Um, See, I, I really love the first uh, two, season, I, two seasons, I think. Uh, um, cried almost every single episode. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't say it was like amazing television, but it, it was is amazing. It, it was it, it's solid, you know. I, I've actually been surprised about this one. I'm glad you finally did watch it because when I was watching it at first, I was like, "This show is made for Kirk to watch because this is what he stands for." But this is like positivity and taking care of yourself. Yeah, yeah, you and, I, all and, and I, I'm very flattered. Right, right. That, right. But I, I think part of the problem is when the shows are too familiar to my life uh -huh. it's not very entertaining because it's my life uh -huh. Do you know what i mean like whenever yeah. i hear that from people I'll be like oh my god this is right up your alley when i watch it i'm like it's too, too much far, it's yeah. too much up my alley it's it's right up my ass I like I, I live this all day long that's not why i watch tv i want to watch tv about <laughs> something else you i know? think the reason people love it so much i know you you know this but it's um it is so rare these days to have just a positive show yeah yeah and there's some really good writing you know uh stacy continued to watch later episodes and uh, you know occasionally i'll sit down and watch and i'll thoroughly enjoy it there, yeah. there's there's a more recent episode where they're in the you know in the coach's room and uh and ted is having some kind of issue with his ex-wife or something and the other coach is like, okay, we got to get the dogs get together. Get the dogs together. And, and they go, oh, yeah. Uh, and then that, you know, that uh, that assistant to the owner comes, you know, running down the stairs. And he's all, he's all like winded. 
I'm and then, here. I heard it. <laughs> and then that, you know, former uh, football player guy. He's always grumpy. He's like, yeah, he's, oh, he's, you guys yeah, are killing and, me But that, that whole But he scene, still yells his ideas. From yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, you should blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, that whole scene yeah. is just so beautifully written yeah. and uh, acted. And it, it's so specific and unique. Like, you've never seen really a scene like this before. Yeah. And, you know, so stuff like that. But, but other stuff, I'm just like... Mm, I feel like there there's a lot of echoes of previous like the first couple seasons they're they're really breaking a lot of new ground you know and later on I feel like it just becomes comfort food definitely for the Not, f- I won't debate that I would still I think that show I love it so much I I at least give it an eight but I would probably go nine just because I love it so yeah. much yeah actually this episode is going on forever it is. I, th- <laughs> I think we uh, can have another break for a second so let's do that all right we're back from the break. Uh, but the show that I'm really into now is Dairy Girls. Have you seen this? Oh, wait, didn't we talk about Dairy Girls? Probably not. Have you watched it? Oh, yeah, all of it. Oh, I, it's I, awesome. So Stacy watched the whole thing. Yeah. And about halfway through, she's like, I bet you you would like this show. And uh, I just never got around to it. And then Stacy and I were like, what are we going to watch now? Dude. And, and we sat down to watch it. And I was just like, oh, That's my so God. That's so funny. I, I, A, was assuming you had already seen it. B, I thought we had talked about it. Um, yeah, that show was totally weird because um, I think my wife had heard from someone that it was kind of a fun show. And and we started watching it with my brother and, and his wife, actually. And it was really interesting. Mm-hmm. And then we got more into it. And yeah, we've seen all of it. It's yeah. really entertaining. And, it, and it's so touching. And yeah. it touches on periods of time that you can relate to. And you're like, oh, and of course, I didn't live in Ireland. But, you know, same similar t- time periods. Yeah. Yeah. It might be even more up your alley because I then, think they're the around 90s. your age. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, they're in high school when yeah, you would have been in high school. They're just a little younger. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, now, the next one's going to really bother people. But Succession. So I haven't seen it. Oh well, Stacy, Stacy and I sat down because you know everyone keeps it's talking fantastic. about. It. Yeah, and Stacy and I sat down to watch it, and the first episode uh, I really liked. Second episode I really liked. A- as time went on, though, I, I just felt like it was it just really? It not really my thing. Huh. And you know, if nothing else was on, I absolutely would would power through it and enjoy it. You know, it, it, the the characters are interesting, the family dynamic. You know, that's another thing that people say. You know. It'll be, oh my God, Kirk, you have to watch it. It's so right up your alley. It has to do with family okay. dynamics. I, I I live family dynamics. It's my profession. It's my professorship. So, so it's a cartoon. Uh, so, <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, you know, it, there's some real uh, things there, but I, it, I don't watch TV to continue my work day. <laughs> I see. And, and also the characters, the characters are, at least at the beginning of that first season, are not super. Be- Some of the characters are not super believable. I'm gonna have to watch it because I hear amazing things. But the other weird thing nowadays is that you'll hear about a show, and because it comes out of nowhere, right? It launches on some platform, and then people start watching it. Because remember, in the old days, it was like there's a new show, and everyone and would watch. At it. most, you missed one episode because right. people are talking about that first episode. Yeah. All you have to do is catch up the next week. And nowadays you miss the whole season because like they'll stream the whole thing and yeah. you're like, and now everyone's talking about the, so I feel like Succession was something when I first started hearing about it, I thought it was some show that had been around for like five years. And then I realized recently, I was like, oh, is this a, a recent thing? Like, yeah. And then my mom was recommending it to me. She's like, you got to yeah. watch Succession. Yeah, there's a certain critical mass that'll eventually happen where I'll yeah. be like, okay, fuck it. I'll watch it. Yeah. So um, with Dairy Girls, it paid off, you know, but with Succession and also mm. Stacy and I, we both have to like it to continue yeah. watching it. And Stacy particularly didn't like it. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's... So have you halted? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think I'll go back. I, I don't imagine it gets any more interesting for The reason for I didn't want to watch it, even though I just recently heard about it, was because my understanding is like it is about a rich family. Yeah, right. So like that's a another... dynasty kind of thing? Yeah, it's you could argue it's about the Trump family. Um, or the Murdochs, I heard. Like, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, and part of me was like, Gross. I don't want Yeah, to. it is gross. And and they don't apologize. It, it's supposed yeah. to be gross. That the characters are but like I didn't like Dynasty when I was growing up either. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the, uh, but you're supposed but there's some shining light in each character, you know, some redeeming quality that you can some vulnerability that you can uh, humanize them with. But mm. but the uh, yeah, right. I mean, that's the thing. Like, the whole tension is succession yeah. of the business. Yeah. So, the patriarch is old, and the 
siblings, the children, are vying to succeed. It's King Lear. Yeah. And um, I do not give a shit. And I, and I, <laughs> and I, you could argue, well, uh, Sopranos, I also don't give a shit if these criminals. Uh, well, right? That's an interesting thing to throw out. Uh, you're right. So I guess it's just hypocritical. But I love that mafia shit. <laughs> yeah. So I think if this sort of psychopathy yeah. and greed and backstabbiness it compels you in the way that Sopranos compels us, then it works for you. But for me, I, I just I was like, maybe it's too familiar to me. Mm-hmm. Like the 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 disgusting greed. And again, the show doesn't applaud. They they're they're trying yeah, yeah. to out. Yeah. greed you know they're not they're not yeah. saying this is awesome you know it's like with um uh what was that uh with turtle and oh yeah and entourage yeah so that one is Which not hate, it's not love. trying to <laughs> out douchebags no it, it is, is trying to be celebrating them celebrating it yeah this show is not celebrating greed right. uh it's it's really an indictment on it and it's supposed to be deliciously competitive and 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 that sort of thing and and and, and you know it's pretty good writing well, and, okay, but, so Game of Thrones is like that, but I guess it's there's enough distance because it's a fantasy world. I guess. Well, because right, it's like we loved watching the intrigue and this person trying to like outmaneuver the other person. You know, maybe it's relatability. So with Sopranos, especially as the show progressed, there is a relatability to the main characters. With, yeah. With Tony Soprano, there's some relatability yeah, with... you have these big dreams in a hospital, and you don't know if you're in reality or not. <laughs> there's Dr. Melfi, <laughs> there's uh, the, you know, uh, I can't remember, Leva, I can't remember her... Carmela? Her, Carmela. Uh, there's relatability yeah. with, with um, other... Christopher, everyone. Yeah, Christopher. It, you can, you know these people. Yeah, um, yeah. Adrienne, right? There, there's, uh, that's Christopher's Adrienne, girlfriend, right? Yeah. yeah. There's... Adriana. Uh, yeah. Adrian, there's these relatable bits. Right. And no, that's a good point. And so you, even though these are like living a different kind of life, you can attach like, okay, I know someone like this. I know someone like this. Yeah. Not only I know someone like this, I have a problem that's similar. I know someone that's got a problem that's yeah. similar. Yeah, right. Yeah. You, you can kind of see yourself in right. another life having a similar thought yeah. or something. And with Succession, the characters are so severe that to me that I couldn't relate to a single one oh, of them. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, arguably the only one I could relate to was considered to be the biggest dick in the family, which is the the middle son who has the most competence in business. And he's really desperately trying to suck up to his dad. And um, that was the only one I, the other siblings, I was, especially this one brother-in-law was, is like one of the worst people that's I've ever seen depicted oh, wow. anyway. So I think that's another part of it. You know, like in, in game of Thrones, uh, you, you eventually start to relate to Tyrion or Rob or right. John or Eddard, uh, you know, there's something to someone you're kind of rooting for when yeah, I was you watching sink Sus- your teeth into some of these people and be like, if you win, I'm not going to be unhappy. Yeah. When I was watching Succession, given my frequent anger at the greed of materialism and the financial institutions of my country mm. and the destruction to the planet and to the poor and to our, you know, corrupting our political system, which this you know show is supposedly trying to out, but there's no one central at the in the story, and I know what's on purpose. There's even this this poor cousin who is unemployed, and he's desperately trying to just get a job so he can pay his bills. But even he starts to get into the greed game, you know. So I wonder because you know I love American Psycho; it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And and in that movie, there is no uh, moral center, right? However, the storytelling is done in such a way where you are not at the end going like, ah, he got away with it. Or He's like, vulnerable. Oh, he fooled them. Right you know? away. Like, you know, you could argue the opening scene when he's putting on the face mask and everything. Uh, he's setting up his his way. But pretty quickly, you know, with the card, you're like, oh, he's struggling. Right. And, you know, like a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode, right. uh, in a weird way, you can kind of relate to the that. insecurity. And at the end, you're not forced to accept the evil morality. Right. You are basically realizing... 
yes, this environment, this greed, these people, because they're all greedy. It's the same thing. And they're one buying. This is gross. And no one is trying to convince yeah. me otherwise. And I, I think succession actually hits on those beats. You know, okay. there, there's a, like there's a one scene where the uh, uh, the family takes a helicopter or something and they go out to the country and they play a pickup game of bat, uh, baseball. And these poor people or working class people join them are sort of randomly invited hey, come on play with us and this kid comes to the plate and I don't, I don't know if i have this scene exactly right but the asshole little kid brother in the family you know he's one of the rich kids um he says if you hit a home run or if you get on base or something i'll give you a million dollars and 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 everyone kind of is like oh my god he's he's telling the truth like he will because he has that much money and he's that and he's that kind of guy where he's kind of random you know he's kind of chaotic. Uh -huh. and he just throws that out there and you see the look on the kid and the family others like oh my god and and, and the kid doesn't doesn't, doesn't. and the, yeah and and the guy he doesn't humiliate him he's like oh my god but he's just like yeah sorry kid because he's so rich he doesn't even realize what just happened yeah. you know to him it was like uh, it's like it was like if someone did it to him he'd be like oh like shit i guess i don't I have are at the you know a bar and there's darts and i'm like dude if you hit that i'll give you 10 bucks right and then you don't i'm like ah sorry right so it was like that to him yeah and uh and and so it it, it really illuminates and it's it's a pretty it, that was one of my favorite scenes actually because i was just like that well, really I mean, says I a, a lot it. i want to watch it um, but, but you were saying that they still present redeeming qualities to some of the characters yeah and that's where i was saying like yes it's true they show us qualities about patrick bateman that makes one feel sorry for him but none of it is presented as redeeming yeah but you know beef the tv show you know, there, there's a lot of really awful behavior. Yeah. I don't know. It's just art is art. I, I don't know why beef. I couldn't, me and Stacy could not stop watching that show yeah. or a movie okay. like, yeah, um, uh, uh, what was that? Severance, right? A, a TV show like severance. I, Love that show. I wanted to watch it, and and that show is kind of confusing. It, it. I still haven't finished that. So I've only seen. So good. Yeah, I gotta finish. And that. why is Succession when everyone loves it? Why Breaking Bad when everyone loves it? And and me and Stacey are kind of like, <laughs> eh, you know, like what is that? Okay, that's fair. There is art, you know. There's. I'll watch it and let you know my opinion. <laughs> All right. Well, that is it for that episode of Psychology in what Seattle. What score did you give Dairy Girl? Uh, well, so far I give it an eight. Oh, okay, but uh, that it might bump up to a ten. Um, there's a lot of things I've been watching lately. The the dropout, which you loved, and I oh, yeah. I just watched recently. Oh, that's so good. Um, Mike is and Vinny, I rewatched recently. Really, I rewatched Moana, and I think uh, I bumped it up to a nine. Oh, because uh, seeing it a second time, I think the first time I saw it with you, I was a little overwhelmed with with everything that was happening. Knowing the story beats and and seeing it again for the second time, a, a, a nine, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons movie I gave a ten. I think we've already talked about that. I, I've I've seen that. So that movie came out last month. I've seen it three times. Yeah, I love that movie. It's so fun. I saw it twice. And I've yeah. And I've I've caught additional because a lot of jokes yeah. are going pretty quick. Yeah. And uh, and I cry. Yeah, that's a movie where because you know you really know how you feel about a movie when you go see it and you're excited and then you quickly go see it again and you're still excited. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, you know, I, I, there's another movie recently that I saw the first time, Guardians 3. I saw it and I was really excited. And then I went again to see it and I still liked it, but my excitement dropped. Mm. So, whereas Dungeon stayed consistent for me. Mm. Yeah, I saw Guardians 3. What did I, I gave it an 8. Yeah. I like Guardians yeah, 3. Yeah, it was very entertaining. It was better than Oh, one. the reason why I gave it an 8 was because it's one of the most difficult movies it's got to have the most difficult scene i've ever seen in any marvel movie uh you know Which, the the what? animal scenes the, oh yeah, yeah like and when rocket has yeah. his moment yeah. um that was quite possibly one of the most hard and i know people will be like oh you know uh james gunn that's him doing his thing pulling your heartstrings well fuck oh, it yeah. fuck it dude it, it hit <laughs> 
it worked on me. Yeah, yeah. and dude, my brother—that's not and a I, story. That's not a story you typically see depicted. No, my brother and I disagreed heavy on this one. He 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 enjoyed it, but he really disliked the story in a lot of places. And I was like, Whoa. did he did he feel like that that heart wrenching story was manipulative? Because so, some people will say that. Um, it's more like he didn't like. Well, first of all, I I got into a debate with him about so there is a moment that he thought was the key and i th- i was like that's not the key and it was uh spoiler alert when they um when they uh unmask him or not unmask him really when they pull the face off you know uh, of the bad guy mm-hmm. uh he felt like that was like really very pivotal and important and i was like that's not that important and pivotal but but the main thing is that he just felt like the story arc was and i was like no i actually that's what i liked about it because i do have complaints about the movie mm. but the story i liked <laughs> yeah i felt like yeah. the story was trying to return to a little bit more grounded you know yeah because guardians 2 and a lot of the other Mar- marvel right. movies they try to go so big and so far well guardians 2 had a big opportunity because it was actually trying to tell this father-son story yeah i mean i like guardians 2 it was it was fine it's just i gotta go back and think but there, there were many things about guardians 2 where you know what it was some of that effect that you were talking about earlier where they grabbed what was great about Guardians 1 and they're like, okay, cool. Let's add all those elements, sprinkle all those elements in Guardians 2. Right. But that alone is not enough. Right. And the rest of it was good enough to where I didn't hate the movie. I was like entertained and all these things. Yeah, yeah. But Guardians 1 was so much better. Yeah, and it was so groundbreaking yeah, at the time. Right, like, I, I, you know, I think now it's... I had, had a lot of those elements from Guardians 1, mm-hmm. more so than Guardians 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I and I thought the banter and the it was fu- there was many funny yeah. parts and and yeah. they were really throwing the dice on the rocket storyline because you right. know the whole premise of the movie arguably yeah. is just about rocket right, right. and his backstory and if that doesn't work then it but it right. it so worked and the time that they took to build up to that you know they they really let that breathe and the the characters especially. Hit, you know his girlfriend i guess you could say rocket's girlfriend well what what i really don't forgive the movie for is when i got home both of my daughters insisted we needed to get baby raccoons that's not okay <laughs> did they watch guardians 3 yeah because that scene that heart-wrenching scene is, is I, I know maybe not for kids man i was un- so that's that is another complaint i did have is guardians 1 and guardians 2 is not that shocking you know there's not yeah no there are a couple scenes that's one of the worst in guardians 3 that's one of the worst but disturbing that i know but yeah totally yeah Yeah. so yeah yeah. how how did they deal with they're fine well for now 20 years we'll find out the real repercussions yeah um yeah there was a couple scenes where i was like did you need to do that because like yeah because like for example taking off the face i wouldn't have shown the thing i would have been like you could you could kind of hint at like oh you know, whatever. But it was very disturbing. I was like, okay, yeah. don't show my... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, was, it was only PG-13. PG-13, yeah. I didn't expect, you know... But you're, neither of your kids are 13, so... Parental guidance is... <laughs> <laughs> I just... Look, they've seen all the Marvel movies. Not all, but like the main line. And they saw Guardians yeah, 1. Yeah, certainly Guardians you would not think Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. 3... Because you think, oh, it's probably PG-13 because, yeah, there's a lot of violence. But they it, use the F word. But it's cartoonish <laughs> yes. with aliens yeah. and spaceships and robots. Yeah. You you don't think, like, it's going to be depicting real... Yeah, gore. Yeah, yeah. And, and real uh, um, real heart-wrenching yeah. tragedy. Yeah. It, like, I don't want to re-watch that movie because of that, of that tragedy, you know? And... Um, Total side note, I watched a three and a half hour documentary a couple days ago about the books and movies, Watership Down and Plague Mm. Dogs. And Plague Dogs written by the same author, I think Richard Adams is his name. Um, And I won't go into the details because we have to adjourn because it's after midnight right now. And um, Watership Down, the book, uh, the ancillary books of that world, the movie... The miniseries on Netflix are some of my favorite things of all time. Plague Dogs, I saw when I was a kid. My mom brought me and my younger brother to it, thinking it was just a kid's cartoon. It's a kid's movie. It is not a kid's movie. It's horrible for adults to watch. It's, yeah. And it has a similar heart-wrenching, horrific uh, storyline to it. Right. That they, that they continue... And, and 
the older I get, the worse it gets on me. Yeah. But anyway, I watched the whole three and a half. It's on YouTube. I wish I had it off oh, top of my head. But, watch that. but all you have to do is, you know, search for a Watership Down Plague Dogs discussion on YouTube and look for the one that's three and a half hours. And Oof. it breaks it down and it talks about the process and the author, you know, and of course the the author in conversation with C. S. Lewis and Tolkien and and the beginning of what they called xenofiction, which is like, you know, animal mm, animal fiction and uh the social commentary and um what it says about society. Oh and, fascinating. And um yeah, it, it's just it, I was just I was glued to my but I was re traumatized yeah. by the plague dogs um storyline being in and also anyway, it, it, it there's a lot of experimentation on animals that's yeah. depicted in the book and in the in the movie that is burnt in my brain and and um so that's where we're in this episode yeah um animal rights people <laughs> right Bernal? yeah and everyone out there please take care of yourself because you deserve it